Open RAN is one of the hottest topics in the telecom sector today. So I'm talking with Rima Eontel. She is chief architect at Red Hat about this very hot topic. So uh, Rima, is there one major universally accepted benefit of adopting Open RAN? Um, I would say it's the fact that it's a software-based solution based on open interfaces. Um, because with that come all the benefits you derive from using software solutions, such as faster development cycles, future-proofing where you don't need to rip and replace uh, components from your networks, you just replace the software, um, more uh, options for automation, uh, better and easier updates and upgrades, uh, and overall lifecycle management. Um, also, uh, you have better opportunities for multi-vendor interactions because you have standardized open interfaces. It gives opportunities for new players to enter the market easier. Um, they can play uh, you know, with very unusual, uh, unique services potentially, um, as opposed to sticking with what traditional services are. Um, and uh, this way you have a lot more innovation as you don't normally get with open source software approach uh, from our experience. Um, because the standardized disaggregation allows this type of multi-vendor approach, Network operators can mix and match solutions in their networks uh, and they can focus on their priorities. For instance, some operators might prioritize cost, some operators might prioritize the speed of rollout of new services, and some might prioritize diversity of uh, the services or combination of any of these. Uh, so uh, looking even into the future, uh, this open RAN approach gives opportunity to uh, bring in like new MVN types of MVNOs, uh, which can bring services that we haven't even thought about yet, because they can introduce very focused services on top of existing open RAN infrastructure. And, and Rima, how should operators be thinking about the investments? Uh, and total cost of ownership of an open RAN deployment. Uh, and how do hidden or assumed costs factor in here? Um, so people anticipating cost savings around networking equipment and operations. First of all, because uh, open RAN assumes the use of common of the shelf hardware. So you're getting definitely getting the economy of scale that comes with it. The same servers that are being used by um, public clouds and IT industry in general. However, you have to be careful and remember who you are uh, as a telco operator. So while you might derive more benefits from uh, or open RAN uh, as a greenfield operator, if you're an incumbent, if you have legacy networks to contend with, you have to remember that there will be integration costs that you might have to keep two separate operational teams to run your legacy equipment and networks versus your open RAN based networks. You might have to train uh, your staff because it's a completely different paradigm uh, to run uh, soft, fully software-based operations. So if you haven't done it already, that's that sort of migration some of our customers have. Uh, but if you haven't, you have to factor that in as a cost. Also, you have to remember that 5G is uh, has more density than previous Gs. Uh, so per unit, you might have the saving, but overall uh, cost might still be the same or even higher. Um, you have to also remember that you're deploying your 5G potentially in uh, areas in sites that you haven't used before. Um, and those sites might not be as secure as what you're used to. It's not a data center, it's not a central office. And you might lose that node because somebody might just walk off with it and then it's a truck roll to replace it and uh, you know the cost of the node itself. So you have to remember uh, these types of things. Um, so, um, for your operational cost, you have to remember that software development 
um, has been uh, done for years and years, and you can benefit from it in your cost savings, but you have to actively work on it. You have to include uh, CICD pipelines in your testing and development and deployment cycles. And if you uh, remember all of that, then you will probably see those costs that you're expecting. Okay. Um, and do you think that Open RAN might play a role in small cell or in building deployments in mature markets? I mean, could that be a starting point for urban deployments of Open RAN equipment? So I recall a study that said uh, about 80% of calls terminate or originate inside a building. So, uh, you know, small cells, indoor, all of that is extremely important. And open RAN is perfect for it because you can use the same type of architecture you're using for your uh, outdoor networks, for your indoor networks. And that's possible because of the disaggregation, uh, because of the split in uh, open RAN. So you can only put the radio equipment at the indoor sites, but you can pull your resources at uh, your edge sites. And this way, uh, you know, you can manage everything a lot easier. And uh, that's, uh, you know, for, for starting, uh, that's a cheaper potentially solution of doing it than you know putting the whole integrated radio uh, at each site, uh, which probably would not be um, would not be possible, especially in dense urban areas where you have to deploy uh, you know uh, lots and lots of equipment indoors for it to work. Uh, and if you're using a solution that's not open RAN. And importantly, Rima, what are the security considerations that service providers need to think about with regards to open RAN deployments? Well, so um, open RAN is based on the architecture that is built on fully cloud native concepts and on uh, zero trust, meaning that there's no assumed trust between any two entities. They always need to uh, authenticate and get authorization for communication. It also uses uh, secured open interfaces. So there's already um, mechanism built in uh, in the specifications for secure communication, meaning you have to encrypt your data. Um, and uh, so service providers need to remember that they have to account for this from the get go. Uh, security is not something you can bolt on afterwards. You have to build it in from the beginning. You have to remember that you need to have infrastructure in place uh, to provide that type of zero trust and encryption. You need to have mechanism, mechanisms to manage your certificates. You need to have hardware that can handle encryption on every interface. Uh, also, if you're talking about uh, hardware, you need to select the type of hardware that can provide you the right security, meaning it can support uh, secure boot so nobody can get access to sensitive data stored on, uh, on the boxes. Um, moving to the platform, you need to make sure you have uh, recommended by Open RAN uh, immutable operating uh, system, uh, secure, protected uh, container runtime environments. And if you look at the applications, they also need to fit into that uh, paradigm. So you need to have your software that was developed with security in mind from the get-go. Uh, it needs to be based on um, develop life cycle development that includes security at each point of your CI CD pipeline, for instance. So you test for security at every point. Uh, and then you have a fully integrated, fully secure stack that you're putting in your network. Well, these are all absolutely critical considerations for service providers today. So Rima, thanks very much for talking to us about Open RAN. Thanks very much. Thank you for having me.